Hi everyone, thanks for joining us in this first virtual edition of Converge 2020. My name is Aldo Sponton, I'm a VP of Technology and I lead the research and development of artificial intelligence at Globant. Um, as we all know, we are living difficult times today, so I hope everyone is safe and at home. Um, I wish that we can all come out of this situation and uh, evolve uh, towards a better stage of humanity. Um, the topic today, we are all talking about the legacy that this situation can leave us. We are all talking about augmented collaboration, uh, about our ability to leverage technology uh, and augment the way we do things, both individually and collectively. Um, AI has brought us uh, several revolutions. Uh, in the field of, for example, computer vision, uh, when in back in 2012, an algorithm based on convolution and neural networks outperformed every other approach uh, to image classification at the time. Uh, or for example, also in the field of voice recognition, when in 2015, a deep learning algorithm reached uh, levels of a word error rate similar to those of humans. Uh, but my idea today is to talk a very about a very particular revolution inside the field of artificial intelligence, uh, which began to take shape, let's say about two years ago, uh, and which today uh, leads us to explore new ideas for human-machine collaboration. And that revolution is natural language processing, or NLP. Uh, NLP is, of course, much more than two years old, uh, but some of the techniques, techniques, sorry, or the technologies that spawned this revolution today were born, let's say, two or three years uh, back in time. Um, that revolution has a word, and the word is transformers. I won't enter into the technical details of Transformers, uh, and those are not the robots in the movies. Uh, it's uh, Transformers, this is a novel deep learning architecture introduced uh, in 2017 that is specially uh, effective for NLP tasks. Um, these architectures uh, give birth to language models that are cap capable of deeply understanding uh, the way in which we as humans communicate with each other and transmit our ideas. Um, they even have the amazing ability of generating text, you know, generating coherent and meaningful text, even when they are conditioned or forced to speak about made up topics. It's a, it's a superb ability for this kind of language models. Um, and given this revolution in natural language understanding, there has been a lot of effort to apply the same techniques to understanding programming language, to understanding code. Um, the fundamental ability behind these language models is to basically represent the semantic information in words or in phrases as numbers. So computers can deal with them, so arithmetics in those number spaces uh, can have a semantic meaning, so you can do operations with these kind of vectors, these kind of entities, and these operations will make sense in a semantic perspective or from a semantic perspective. Uh, same idea can be applied to code. So we can train models to learn how to represent, numerically represent code, the functionality behind a piece of code. Um, and we have done that. At Globant, we have developed some language models that are capable of understanding both the way we write code and the way we describe the functionality of that code. Uh, these models are basically the heart of augmented coding, something that Martin presented earlier today. Uh, a platform basically to enhance development and um, to enhance capabilities, developers' capabilities through these models that were trained to understand both natural language and programming language. Uh, in terms of data, we have trained these models with almost 1 billion lines of code in the different programming languages that we support today. Those, those are uh, Java, um, JavaScript, C Sharp, and Python. And we have in our roadmap uh, support for other languages such as TypeScript, C++, Kotlin, and Golang. 
But what are these models capable of? Well, first of all, they are capable of understanding pieces of code and, and not just understanding the pieces of code, but understanding the relationship between the functionality of two pieces of code. And when I say understanding, I mean, again, being able to represent in numbers the functionality of those pieces of code. So if two pieces of code are doing or are implementing the same functionality, even if they are using, uh, if, even if they are not using, sorry, the same words, the same instructions or the same structure, their representation will be similar. And that's the fundamental result behind the, behind augmented coding. Uh, it's the same principle, uh, that make NLP work. Um, it's, um, representing the words or representing the semantic of a word in numbers. So operations in that num num numeric space will have a semantic, um, dual in, 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 in our language. Secondly, when we combine these code vector representations to natural language representations coming from NLP models, uh, we get the semantic search or the semantic code search. In a nutshell, we are able to search for a particular functionality and the platform will answer with different pieces of code uh, that are basically semantically related to what, I, to what I asked for. Basically, you can search by functionality instead of search uh, by keywords, uh, instead of doing a lexical search, you can do um, a semantic code search, searching for a piece of code by the functionality you want. In this video here, you will see a couple of examples uh, using our plugin in, um, in IntelliJ IDE, sorry. Um, first, doing a quick search in a Java repository, asking for a piece of code to check if a sentence can be read backwards. Uh, the most relevant result is a method to actually check if a string is a palindrome. Uh, and that is actually the definition of checking if a sentence can be read backwards. This is, uh, this could be seen like a toy example, but basically is showing the power of combining, you know, NLP and code semantic representation. The second example is a search in um, C sharp repositories, trying to find code to find numbers that, that can only be divided by themselves. Again, the results are functions to get prime numbers. Um, and again, as I mentioned, these are examples that are pretty helpful to show the power of the combination of language models in both worlds, in the natural language world and in the code or programming language world. Last but not least, models have another cool functionality, the ability to automatically document code. Um, I'm going maybe to misuse language here, but it's like we are using the models in reverse. It's not exactly that, but it's like giving the model um, a piece of code as an input and the, and the model will generate word by word, just picking words from a vocabulary, from a dictionary, will generate a phrase that basically has one, it has sense in English, can be read by, by, by us, and two, it describes the functionality of the piece of code that I give the, the model as an input. Uh, this is what is called natural language uh, generation. It has its particular challenges, but the results are very, very promising and very cool. Um, all these augmented coding functionalities are, are available in a, in a web client and in plugins for different IDEs as we showed in the examples. Uh, in this way, we can basically bring uh, this revolution of AI and language models, language understanding, closer to the day-to-day -day work of our of our developers. And as Martin mentioned earlier, augmented coding is one of the pillars in which we are reinventing the way we do software uh, to basically do it um, with less errors, more efficiently, and faster. Uh, so that's it for augmented coding. If you want to know a bit more, we have a landing page that is augmented.global.com slash coding. And again, thanks for watching and thank you all from Montevideo, Uruguay.